So here's a mini lecture where you don't get to stare at my smiling face. Um, yeah, in April of 1860, the Democratic Party splits. This is what hands Lincoln the election. We're going to get to the exactly why that happens. Um, Southerners had demanded an endorsement of a federal code to guarantee the rights of slaveholders. Those Southerners don't get it, so they walk out. They just said, fine, this is no longer our party. They leave. Um, six weeks later, the remaining delegates that had actually been there uh, re reconjoin and say, okay, well, who do we need to pick? And so they pick Stephen Douglas as the nominee. Those in the South pick John Breckinridge. May of 1860, you also get a constitutional union party. It's made up of Whigs, know-nothings, uh, pro-union Democrats, and they nominate a guy named John Bell, a very centrist type of person, as you can probably tell by looking at the map. The Republicans nominate Lincoln. He's actually one of their more moderate choices, not the firebrands that you had before. Um, but what it winds up really being is it's Lincoln versus Douglas in the north, and it's Breckinridge and Bell and Douglas in the south. Douglas is the only person who is foolish enough to actually campaign in the entire country, seeing how divided it is at the time. Lincoln's name does not even appear on 10 ballots, uh, in, on, the, on the ballots of 10 different states. He gets 39.9% of the popular vote, but because the country is divided and because most of the population center uh, is in the North, and because of the Electoral College, he gets 180 electoral votes, which effectively makes him President of the United States. So that brings us to the worst president ever. That, of course, is not actually Lincoln. Uh, Pierce was president during the Kansas-Nebraska Kansas -Nebraska Act, and he, of course, uh, made that go further by actually picking one over the other. Buchanan, however, is probably, in my opinion, one of the worst, if not the absolute worst president uh, that we had had. He was a weak leader. He did nothing to stop secession. Actually, he did a little bit, but really not that much at all. Uh, he had meddled um, in the Dred Scott decision for the Supreme Court. He thought that uh, it would settle the slavery issue, that Dred Scott decision, which absolutely did not do that. He did think that secession was illegal and a bad idea, but he also said that the federal government could do nothing to do it. Now, a lot of people argue that it violated the oath of office for not protecting the Constitution. As you know, when the president takes the oath of office, he does say, I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. In his State of the Union address, uh, Buchanan says, uh, all for which the slave states have ever contended is to be let alone and permitted to manage their own domestic institutions in their own way. As sovereign states, they are alone and responsible before God and the world for slavery existing among them. For this, the people of the North are not more responsible and have no more fight than to, inter uh, to interfere then with similar institutions in Russia or Brazil. So he's basically saying, hey, states, you have to go it, go it um, all on your own. Um, each state gets to make their own decision. And if you leave, oh, well, you know, you, you have to live with that decision. So uh, he also did not reinforce any of the federal installations in the South. The South starts leaving as this happens, because we're going to get to that here in just a second. And he doesn't even reinforce any of the federal installations down there in the South. So, South Carolina is the first. It is convinced that a Republican administration would try to undermine slavery. Lincoln himself said in several campaign uh, speeches that he would not mess with slavery where it was. He made that very clear. He would not mess with slavery where it was. But the um, South Carolinians believe that he, he would, and he probably would, uh, appoint anti-slavery judges, anti-slavery postmasters, anti-slavery military officers. And December 20th of 1860, South Carolina votes to leave the Union. It's important to understand that Lincoln had been elected, but Lincoln hadn't even taken office yet. They try to justify their decision that states are sovereign entities and can leave just as easily as they joined. Uh, one South Carolina Unionist, because not the, the entire state of South Carolina did not decide to leave the Union, uh, his name was James Pettigrew, said that the state is too small for a country and too large for an insane asylum, just to give you an idea of what he thought. So uh, that is basically when states start leaving the Union, and that is basically about the time when the Civil War is uh, almost, I don't want to say inevitable, but it's getting real close. 